Welcome to Holistic Health Made Simple, where you will find health solutions to set you free from the overwhelm of diet culture and frustration with the ever-changing health rules. We go beyond the calorie and diet dogma to equip you to be healthy through simple changes to real food, mindset, and lifestyle. Hey, I'm Jolene. I'm a nutritional therapy practitioner, wife, furry guardian, and non-bendy yogi. Like you, I spent years chasing skinny instead of health. I finally learned that I needed to take a holistic approach to health and give my body what it needed to thrive. If you are ready to find a health plan that is tailored to you and your current health, solutions that are broken down into simple steps to make it easier to implement, results that are undeniable like more energy, improved mood, better sleep, and fat loss, this is the podcast for you. Pop in those headphones, take a deep breath, and let's get I am sure that you've heard the saying, all health begins in the gut. Did you know that optimal gut health is not only important for digestion, but it is also essential to feeling your best? Your gut affects everything from your mood to your immune system, and that's why taking care of it should be a top priority. So gut health pertains to the health of this ecosystem. There's this entire ecosystem that lives inside your digestive tract called the gut microbiome. It is filled with bacteria and it should have a huge diversity and balance. So we want all the different types in there, but in the right balance, which I can't say it because there's billions and trillions of strains, but you'll know when things are out of balance. So any strain that has a large representation that shouldn't throws off the whole balance. Signs of gut issues are not limited to, but include bloating, burping, gas, diarrhea, constipation, stomach pain, ooh, acid reflux and GERD, eee, nausea even. They also can contribute to allergy symptoms and sinus pressure. All of your autoimmune conditions stem from gut issues or have a gut issue trigger. Then there's mental health issues. Your gut is the second brain, you know. Acne, rashes, hormonal imbalances, as well as waking. Um, all of these are tied to issues in your gut or have a gut component where the gut is not healthy. So we need to really start focusing in on our overall health rather than throwing some kind of cream on a rash try to get to the root cause, which most root causes of any issues stem from the gut, but they're so hard to, to um, attack and figure out what exactly is going on. The testing's not quite there. So what can we do to prevent it? Or should we say preventative is the best way? Or if you know that you're having gut issues, figuring out how to, to get it in balance, how to get the diversity there so that you can be healthy and thrive. Far too often we think of taking a probiotic as the way to keep our gut health happy, our gut happy and healthy. But here's the thing, if you're taking the same probiotic day in and day out for months and months or years on end, you are actually throwing the balance or your gut out of balance because you're only giving it certain strains. You're not giving it the diversity that it needs. So if a probiotic is what you enjoy or what's easiest for you. I shouldn't say enjoy, but what's easiest for you. Get several and rotate through them month to month so that you're not throwing um, anything out of balance. There has been a recent study that came out that gave um, people uh, antibiotics first, healthy people. So their gut, they tested their gut. They, they knew what the diversity was up front. And um, they gave them antibiotics, which basically we all know antibiotics kind of disrupt the whole ecosystem in the gut because it's an antibacterial, which kills all the bacteria in your gut. Um, and what they did is they separated it out into three different types, uh, three groups. One got nothing. The control group got nothing. They didn't take a probiotic. They didn't do anything. Then you had um, the group that had a probiotic, that they took a probiotic. And then they had a group that used fermented foods instead of a probiotic. The group that did best of repopulating their gut and getting their gut the healthiest, the fastest, 
was the group with the fermented foods. The second group, surprisingly enough, was a group that did nothing. The group that had the most trouble with their gut and most out of balance was the group that was taking the probiotics. Now, this is not to say that probiotics are bad, but we are trying when we are trying to repopulate our gut or get it healthy, throwing only certain strains over and over and over again, throw everything out of balance. Like I said, this is like um, this is an ecosystem. Think of it like a garden with bugs. I don't know if any of you are gardening, so this will I garden and, and it's something I've learned, but you've got what we call deem good bugs and bad bugs. And you're trying to always rid the bad bugs um, with good bugs or hopefully not chemicals, but sometimes like antibiotics, you need to use something. Um, here's the thing is sometimes those bad bugs turn into good bugs. They become pollinators. So what do you do? You have to, to re you want a balance. You want a balance of good and bad because the bad bugs will attract the good bugs that eat the bad bugs. I know it's kind of a weird, but it's this whole ecosystem. We want everything running smoothly without a lot of medical intervention on our part or prescription or pill intervention on our part. So what can we do to keep our gut back here or how do we make it healthy? How do we maintain the health um, without doing a lot of testing and all this other stuff. What do, can we do today? And here are the three steps that you should focus on when you're focusing on your overall gut health. And just a side note, we will be talking in the several months, several episodes on gut health. They just won't all come at once because there are a lot of intricacies when it comes to gut health and weight loss, gut health and hormonal issues, gut health and autoimmune issues, it's a huge thing to be trying to cover in 15 minutes. So we'll try to break it down on little things of what you can do. Um, right now, this is general. These are the things that you should focus on to keep your gut healthy overall. It is not to nitpick any certain um, issues you're having. This, this is overall gut health. So let's dive into the three steps of a healthy gut. So in these three steps, this is how we nurture our gut. The first step is we seed. Think of it like planting a garden. This garden in the gut is gonna come up a lot because it's very similar. So we seed the probiot the strains we want. We, we seed it with probiotics, but specifically probiotic foods. Your probiotic foods are going to give you the best diversity over taking a pill. Um, like I said, if you're going to take a su probiotic supplement, make sure that you get several different ones and you rotate through them so you're not overpopulating your gut with one specific kind. But probiotic foods are things like sauerkraut, kimchi, lacto-fermented pickles and veggies. So you want lacto-fermented or regular fermented, but fermented veggies, pickles, um, sauerkraut is fermented, so is kimchi. You want the sauerkraut and kimchi that are not in the can, that are in the cold section that have been fermented. Yogurt, you want to look for plain yogurt with very little, little to no added sugar. It's going to have maybe some sugars in it from the milk, but it should have no added sugars. Stuff like kefir, um, which is a European fermented dairy product. There also is water kefir, which is a fermented water. They start with um, uh, bacteria grains, which are not grains, but they're a bacteria culture that helps grow and produce more of the culture in the water. You drink the water, you drink the kefir, which is a milk product, and then you repopulate it. Most people who get into kefir do it themselves at home. Um, and the other thing is kombucha. And when you're looking at kombucha, I want you to look at the back at the added sugar. There are plenty that have sugar in it, but that are not listed on the nutrition label as added sugar. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for that the sugar is coming from the second ferment from the fruit juice that's added and that um, they aren't adding 20, 30 grams of sugar to make it tasty because kombucha is one of those that if they over ferment it, it has lots of the good bacteria in it for our gut, but it also tastes vinegary. So then they put a lot of sugar in it to, to counteract that. And um, I'll get into why we want to look at things when we're looking at fermented foods that are low in sugar. Um, it's summertime here in the U.S. It's June. Uh, looking at things that you can actually ferment. There's it's If you like to try that, 
um, we'll be having a workshop later on this summer about fermenting. So make sure you sign up on the news list. You can just hit the freebie one. You'll get signed on the news list plus the freebie. Um, but learning how to ferment, it's kind of fun. If you have kids at home, it's a great science experiment. So that's one of the things we can do. But the first step in nurturing our gut is to seed our gut with probiotic foods and or a supplement. So the next step in nurturing your gut is to feed what you just seeded. Basically, you're going to feed the seeds. You want to feed it with prebiotic material. Generally, it comes from different fruits and vegetables. You want to rotate through this. Many of us get stuck in a rut of eating the same foods day in and day out. And this can be problematic when we're trying to populate our gut or, or grow the diversity. So we want to make sure that we rotate through different foods each week and not just eat the same thing, like have a, you know, kale, lettuce, salad, whatever your favorite veggie is every day. You want to mix it up, have a little bit of everything. Um, so what are prebiotic, excuse me, prebiotic fruits and vegetables are leafy greens, your lettuces, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cabbages and cauliflower, garlic and onions and mushrooms. They all contain things that um, feed the gut. Also, um, artichokes. There's some things called a uh, inulin in Jerusalem artichokes. That's a prebiotic, but that gets broken down. Like there, there is ways to get prebiotics not from food, but the best ways to get them is from your foods, from your cruciferous vegetables, from your leafy greens. Um, think fiber, basically. Uh, some of them are better than others. Cabbage is a great one because you can ferment it in sauerkraut and then have some knot and mix the two together. And so you're kind of getting your probiotic and prebiotic together and it makes a nice salad. Um, so like adding some ferment uh, sauerkraut to some loose shredded cabbage together is like absolutely delicious. Try it. I'm sure you'll love it. Um, and then, then we get to the next step. So we're going to feed, we're going to seed it first. Then we're going to feed what we seed. And the very last step is weeding. So when we talk about weeding, this is where I come into why I kept saying when you're looking for fermented foods or things to make sure that they don't have a lot of excess sugar. Sugar feeds the bacteria, um, a lot of the bad bacteria that we only want a little bit in us and not a lot of it. So we want to limit our sugar, limit our junk food, limit our processed foods. We want to weed out unwanted species from being too much and too many in us so that we get back to that balance. So we want only, um, we want an abundance of the healthier ones that help us maintain our weight and our hormones and our health and not a large variety of the bad ones that don't do that. That actually, um, there are some bacteria that actually can suck every last bit of sugar out of something that actually can make the carbo, the carbohydrate load higher than what we actually think because of the way those bacteria are acting. They can yank it out of fiber. They can yank it out of every little thing. So we want to make sure that those are very far and few between inside of us. And we only have the ones that keep us healthy, keep us at a healthy weight um, and thrive. So just to recap, we want to have a healthy gut for a healthy immune system, healthy skin, healthy hormones, healthy weight. And to do that and to nurture it and do the basics is we're going to seed it. So we're going to implant probiotic foods first, maybe a supplement. Then we're going to feed those probiotics with prebiotics from some fruits and veggies. Then we are going to weed out the unwanted species inside of us by limiting our sugar and junk food. So remember, seed, feed, weed. And I'm going to just touch on the feed one more time. Fiber stuff. Fiber is what feeds the probiotics. So seed, feed, weed to a healthier, happier gut and a healthier, happier you. Until next time, friends. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you found value in what you heard today, I would be incredibly grateful if you could help spread the word. Sharing is caring after all. Share the podcast with others that will find the information helpful. It's through your support that I can continue to grow and bring more amazing content. And if you 
have a spare moment, I would truly appreciate it if you could leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback means the world to me, and it also helps others discover my show. I read every review and take your suggestions to heart, so please don't hesitate to let me know what you think. Remember, you can stay connected with me by following me on Instagram or visiting the website at holistichealthmadesimple.com. I love hearing from our listeners, so feel free to reach out, share your thoughts, ideas, and even suggestions for future episodes. See you later.